In order for us to do drug or gene delivery, what we do is we load up the bubbles and then we use high ultrasound energy to pop the bubbles and drive our payload into tissue. So here you see bubbles in an artificial uh, blood vessel and we're going to strike them once with high power ultrasound and essentially destroy them. By bursting the bubbles on command, he's able to deliver drugs to tissue with pinpoint accuracy. The result? Smaller doses and fewer side effects. Microbubbles will change forever how we treat disease and examine the body. What in the world? Next layer. Last time I saw an artificial heart was in 2040. This one's even made a real polymer. Looks like it took a hit. It's tearing near the energy cell. Clear case for a new heart. How's he insured? Platinum. Good for him. I'll need a tissue sample for the new heart before we bring him round. Building a heart from scratch is no longer just a dream. You're gonna open me up. From a few of your own cells, a new heart made by a printer. Fifty years from now, we'll have cures for trauma victims that would seem like miracles today. Your left thigh has been fractured and your hip is dislocated. Two ribs and a second lumbar vertebra are also fractured, but you have a bigger problem. Your artificial heart has fissures. You're gonna open me up? You need a new heart. The print's already in progress. It'll only take another 20 hours. Iris scan identified. Marie Balzac. Status cleared for security zone. Have a nice evening. In this high security area, gene specialists have processed the patient's tissue sample. Now they are using it to print a heart. If your car gets banged up because you're in a car accident, what do you do? You go to the body shop and get a new door or fender. But if you happen to be in that same accident, you could die. Now, consider this. In the United States alone, there are 91,000 patients waiting for an organ transplant. And of them, 18 die every day for an organ that never comes. What we need is a human body shop. And in 50 years time, tissue engineering could change everything. A child today with a defective heart valve has limited options. Valves from animals don't last long, and artificial valves can cause clots. Stephen Jakenhuvel wants to avoid these problems by implanting the world's first heart valve grown exclusively from the body's own tissue. We are moving away from engineering and mechanical replacements and trying to biologize more. To replace foreign materials step by step with the body's own tissue. Jochen Hovel begins with a mold of a child's heart valve. First, he injects a mixture of heart valve cells and protein into the mold. Then, adds a blood clotting agent and other ingredients. Together, they bond like a superglue. Within an hour, he has the rough form of a heart valve, which he places in a bioreactor. Next, he adds nutrients and cells which normally line heart valve walls. The cells latch onto the structure and start to grow. Within just three weeks, a complete heart valve has formed. Finally, a pump exercises the valve to strengthen its walls so it can withstand the high pressures in a human heart. Jochen Hovel believes that within 10 years, his heart valves will beat within a human body. 
but valves are just the start. The holy grail of tissue engineering is to grow entire organs from scratch, like the heart. At Clemson University, researchers believe the key may lie with an unexpected everyday machine. We didn't change much, first of all. Um, this is a conventional inkjet printer, and so what we do is we change the cartridge quite a lot. We take the ink out, we'll modify it so it can accommodate our cells. We rinse it and so on, and sterilize it as well. To test the precision of his modified printer, Bolin first fills the ink cartridge with bacterial cells. Instead of paper, he prints on a very thin biogel. Bolin types out a name, hits print, and the machine springs into action. The cells appear to land in precisely the correct place. But will they live? After incubating them for six hours, the researchers check. The green light is just the fluorescence of the cells. And that shows basically that we did two things. One is the cells were printed where we wanted them to be printed. And second is the cells divided so they survived the printing process. Next, he tries something much more difficult. Printing layers of actual heart cells in the same spot to build up a three-dimensional structure. Within a minute, he has created the world's first printed heart tissue. But are the cells still alive? They are, and they actually beat just as in a living human heart. What we see here are a couple of layers of heart cells that we printed using our printers. And what we want to do eventually is to print an entire heart. Uh, we may achieve this in 50 years or so, but uh, there are a number of things to overcome. The uh, ability to print capillaries, for example. But if we overcome those obstacles, and I think we will, then this could quite be possible. Two days before Alon's heart transplant, the insurance department reviews his case. Next. Stop. Now, his attempt to hide his late-night partying could backfire. Please include in the record, patient Degas Alain, inconsistent test results. Urine sample from 7.34 a.m. does not match urine sample taken at 12.20 in our hospital. Probability of manipulation, 80%. Request detailed check, groceries, trash, and contents of refrigerator. Suspicion of alcohol. Run. Fifty years from now, a replacement heart is manufactured on a printer. It's over here. In 24 hours, it will beat inside his body.